I'm Adam. And I'm Sunny. And this is Where There's a Williams, There's a Way. Adam, you're never going to believe what I discovered today. Oh, hey, Sunny. What's got your whiskers all in a twist? Well, I was exploring around in the attic, you know, the usual mousy stuff, when I stumbled upon this huge stash of cheese. Cheese in the attic? That's quite the fine, Sunny. But, uh, do you know that cheese doesn't just magically appear up there, right? Oh, I know that, but I never expected such a treasure trove up in the attic. It's like a mouse paradise. Well, I'm glad you're enjoying it, but you might want to be careful up there. Attics can be a bit unpredictable. Unpredictable? I'm a mouse. We thrive on unpredictability. It's practically our middle name. Well, if mice had middle names, that is. Fair point. Just promise me you won't go turning the attic into some sort of mouse metropolis, okay? I'm pretty sure the landlord wouldn't appreciate that. Cross my whiskers. Although, I must say, if we did establish a mouse metropolis, we could finally address the critical lack of cheese in our daily diets. Today's book delights with remarkable characters and hilariously profound poems in a collection readers will return to again and again. Let's get started. A Light in the Attic by Shel Silverstein A light in the attic. There's a light on in the attic, though the house is dark and shuttered. I can see a flicker and flutter, and I know what it's about. There's a light on in the attic. I can see it from outside. And I know you're on the inside, looking out. How many, how much? How many slams in an old screen door? Depends how loud you shut it. How many slices in a bread? Depends how thin you cut it. How much good inside a day? Depends how good you live them. How much love inside a friend? Depends how much you give them. Moon catching net. I've made me a moon catching net and I'm going hunting tonight. I'll run along swinging it over my head and grab for that big ball of light. So tomorrow just look at the sky and if there's no moon you can bet. I found what I sought and finally caught the moon in my moon catching net. But if the moon's still shining there, look close underneath and you'll get a clear look at me in the sky swinging free with a star in my moon catching net. Hammock. Grandma sent the hammock. The good Lord sent the breeze. I'm here to do the swinging. Now who's gonna move the trees? How not to have to dry the dishes. If you have to dry the dishes, such an awful boring chore. If you have to dry the dishes instead of going to the store. And if you have to dry the dishes and you drop one on the floor, maybe they won't let you dry the dishes anymore. Stop, thief. Policeman, policeman, help me please. Someone went and stole my knees. I chase him down, but I suspect my feet and legs just won't connect. The Sitter Mrs. McTwitter, the babysitter, I think she's a little bit crazy. She thinks a babysitter's supposed to sit upon the baby. Prayer of the Selfish Child Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. And if I die before I wake, I pray the Lord my toys to break, so none of the other kids can use them. Amen. What did? What did the carrot say to the wheat? Let us rest, I'm feeling beat. What did the paper say to the pen? I feel quite all right, my friend. And what did the teapot say to the chalk? Nothing, you silly. Teapots can't talk. Shaking. Geraldine, now stop shaking that cow, for heaven's sake, for your sake and the cow's sake. That's the dumbest way I've seen to make a milkshake. Signals. When the light is green you go, when the light is red you stop. But what do you do when the light turns blue with orange and lavender spots? Picture puzzle piece. One picture puzzle piece lying on the sidewalk. One picture puzzle piece soaking in the rain. It might be a button of blue on the coat of the woman who lived in a shoe. It might be a ma magical bean or a fold in the red velvet robe of a queen. It might be the one little bite of the apple her stepmother gave to Snow White. It might be the veil of a bride or a bottle with some evil genie inside. It 
might be a small tuft of hair on the big bouncy belly of Bobo the bear. It might be a bit of the cloak of the old witch of the west as she melted to smoke. It might be a shadowy trace of a tear that runs down an angel's face. Nothing has more possibilities than one old wet picture puzzle piece. Put something in. Draw a crazy picture, write a nutty poem, sing a mumble gumble song, whistle through your comb, do a loony goony dance, cross the kitchen floor, put something silly in the world that ain't been there before. Monsters I've met. I met a ghost, but he didn't want my head. He only wanted to know the way to Denver. I met a devil, but he didn't want my soul. He only wanted to borrow my bike a while. I met a vampire, but he didn't want my blood. He only wanted two nickels for a dime. I keep meeting all the right people at all the wrong times. Rock and Roll Band If we were a rock and roll band, we'd travel all over the land. We'd play and we'd sing and wear spangly things if we were a rock and roll band. If we were a rock and roll band and we were up there on the stand, the people would hear us and love us and cheer us. Hooray for that rock and roll band. If we were a rock and roll band and we'd have a million fans, we'd giggle and laugh and sign autographs if we were a rock and roll band. If we were a rock and roll band, the people would all kiss our hands. We'd be millionaires and have extra long hair if we were a rock and roll band. But we ain't no rock and roll band, we're just seven kids in the sand. With homemade guitars and pails and jars and drums of potato chip cans. Just seven kids in the sand, talking and waving our hands. And dreaming and thinking, oh wouldn't it be grand if we were a rock and roll band. Something missing. I remember I put on my socks, I remember I put on my shoes. I remember I put on my tie that was painted in beautiful purple and blues. I remember I put on my coat to look perfectly grand at the dance. Yet I feel there is something I may have forgotten. What is it? What is it? Memorize and mow. Mo memorized the dictionary, but just can't seem to find a job. Or anyone who wants to marry someone who memorized the dictionary. Somebody has to. Somebody has to go polish the stars. They're looking a little bit dull. Somebody has to go polish the stars, for the eagles and starlings and gulls have all been complaining they're tarnished and worn. They say they want new ones we cannot afford. So please get your rags and your polishing jars. Somebody has to go polishing the stars. Reflection. Each time I see the upside down man standing in the water, I look at him and start to laugh, although I shouldn't nodder. For maybe in another world, another time, another town, maybe he is right side up and I am upside down. Fancy dive. The fanciest dive that ever was dove was done by Melissa of Coconut Grove. She bounced on the board and flew into the air. With a twist of her head and a twirl of her hair, she did 34 jackknives, backflipped and spun, quadruple gainered and reached for the sun, and then somersaulted nine times in a quarter and looked down and saw that the pool had no water. Here comes. Here comes summer, here comes summer. Chirping robin, budding rose. Here comes summer, here comes summer. Gentle showers, summer clothes. Here comes summer, here comes summer. Whoosh, shiver. There it goes. The Dragon of Grinley Grun. I'm the Dragon of Grinley Grun. I breathe fire as hot as the sun. When a knight comes to fight, I just toast him on sight like a hot, crispy cinnamon bun. When I see a fair damsel go by, I just sigh a fiery sigh. And she's baked like a tater, I think of her later with a romantic tear in my eye. I'm the dragon of Grinley Grund, but my lunches aren't very much fun. For I like my damsels medium rare, and they always come out well done. Blame. I wrote such a beautiful book for you, about rainbows and sunshine, and dreams that come true. But the goat went in and ate it, you know that he would, so I wrote you another one, fast as I could. Of course it could never be nearly as great as the beautiful book that the silly goat ate. So if you don't like this new book I just wrote, blame the goat. Messy Room Whosever room this is should be ashamed, his underwear is hanging on the lamp. His raincoat is there in the overstuffed chair, and the chair is becoming quite mucky and damp. 
His workbook is wedged in the window. His sweater's been thrown on the floor. His scarf and one ski are beneath the TV, and his pants have been carelessly hung on the door. His books are all jammed in the closet. His vest has been left in the hall. A lizard named Ed asleep in his bed, and his smelly old sock has been stuck to the wall. Whose ever room this is should be a shame, Donald or Robert or Willie, or, huh? You say it's mine? Oh dear, I knew it looked familiar. Never. I've never roped a Brahma bull. I've never fought a duel. I've never crossed the desert on a lop-eared swayback mule. I've never climbed an idol's nose to steal a cursed jewel. I've never gone down with my ship into the bubbling brine. I've never saved a lion's life and then had him save mine. Or screamed, "Ow!" while swinging through the jungle on a vine. I've never dealt draw poker in a rowdy lumber camp. Or got up at the count of nine to beat the world's champ. I've never had my picture on a six cent postage stamp. I've never scored a touchdown on a 99 yard run. I've never winged six Daltons with my dying brother's gun. Or kiss Miss Jane and rode my hoss into the setting sun. Sometimes I get to so depressed about what I haven't done. Day after Halloween. Skeleton spirits and haunts. Skeleton spirits and haunts. It's a Halloween sale, a nickel a pail for skeleton spirits and haunts. Skeleton spirits and haunts. More than most anyone wants. Will you pay for a shot? Cause we're quite overstocked on skeleton spirits and haunts. Wavy hair. I thought that I had wavy hair until I shaved. Instead, I find that I have straight hair and a very wavy head. Longmobile. It's the world's longest car, I swear. It reaches from Beale Street to Washington Square. And once you get in it to go where you're going, you simply get out because you're there. Backward Bill. Backward Bill, backward Bill. He lives way up on Backward Hill which is really a hole in the sandy ground, but that's a hill turned upside down. Backward Bill's got a backward shack with a big front porch that's built out back. You walk through the window and look out the door, and the cellar is up on the very top floor. Backward Bill, he rides like the wind. Don't know where he's going, but sees where he's been. His spurs, they go nay, and his horse goes clang, and his six gun goes gnab, and it never goes bang. Backward Bill's got a backward pup. They eat their supper when the sun comes up. And he's got a wife named Backward Lil. She's my own true hate, says Backward Bill. Backward Bill wears his hat on his toes and puts on his underwear over his clothes. And come every payday, he pays his boss and rides off a smiling, a carrying his hoss. Mr. Smeds and Mr. Spats. Mr. Spats had 21 hats and none of them were the same. And Mr. Smeds had 21 heads and only one hat to his name. And when Mr. Smeds met Mr. Spats, they talked of the buying and selling of hats. And Mr. Spats bought Mr. Smeds' hat. Did you ever hear anything crazier than that? Snake problem. It's not that I don't care for snakes, but oh, what do you do when a 20 foot python says, I love you? Bear in there. There's a polar bear in our frigid air. He likes it cause it's cold in there. With his seat in the meat and his face in the fish and his big hairy paws in the buttery dish. He's nibbling the noodles, he's munching the rice, he's slurping the soda, he's licking the ice. And he lets out a roar if you open the door. And it gives me a scare to know he's in there. That polary bear in our frigid air. Superstitious. If you're superstitious, you'll never step on cracks. When you see a ladder, you'll never walk beneath it. And if you'll ever spill some salt, you'll throw some across your back. And carry around a rabbit's foot just in case you need it. You'll pick up any pin that you find lying on the ground. And never, never, ever throw your hat upon the bed. Or open an umbrella when you're in the house. You'll bite your tongue each time you say a thing you shouldn't have said. You'll hold your breath and cross your fingers walking by a graveyard. And number 13 will never gonna do you any good. Black cats will all look vicious if you're superstitious. But I'm not superstitious, knock on wood. The Pirate Oh, the blithery blathery pirate. His name, I believe, is Claude. 
His manner is sullen and irate, and his humor is vulgar and broad. He has often been known to imprison his friends in the hold dark and dank, or lash them up high in the mizzen, or force them to stroll down a plank. He will selfishly ask you to dig up some barrels of ill-gotten gold, and if you so much as just hig up, he'll leave you to fill up the hole. He may cast you adrift in a rowboat, he has no reaction to tears, or put you ashore with no boat on an island and leave you for years. He's a rotter, a wretch, and a sinner, and he's foul as a fellow can be. And if you invite him to dinner, oh please sit him next to me. Herc, I'd rather play tennis than go to the dentist. I'd rather play soccer than go to the doctor. I'd rather play Herc than go to work. Herc? Herc? What's Herc? I don't know, but it must be better than work. Anchored, our anchor's too big for our ship. So we're sitting here trying to think. If we leave it behind, we'll be lost. If we haul it on board, we will sink. If we sit and keep talking about it, it will soon be too late for our trip. It sure can be rough on a sailor when the anchor's too big for the ship. Unscratchable itch. There's a spot that you can't scratch right between your shoulder blades, like an egg that just won't hatch. Here you set and there it stays. Turn and squirm and try to reach it. Twist your neck and bend your back. Here your elbows creak and crack. Stretch your fingers. Now you bet it's going to reach. Nope, that won't get it. Hold your breath and stretch and pray. Only just an inch away. Worse than a sunbeam you can't catch. It's that one spot that you can't scratch. Squishy touch. Everything King Midas touched turned to gold, the lucky fellow. Every single thing I touch turns to raspberry jello. Today I touched the kitchen wall, squish. I went and punched my brother Paul, splish. I tried to fix my bike last week, sploosh. I kissed my mother on the cheek, gloosh. I got into my overshoes, sclush. I tried to read the evening news, smush. I sat down in the easy chair, sploosh. I tried to comb my wavy hair, sloosh. I took a dive into the sea, glush. Would you like to shake hands with me, Splush. Important? Said little A to big G, without me, the sea would be the set, the flea would be the flat, and earth and heaven wouldn't be without me. Said big G to little A, even with the set, could crush and spur and the fool would fly in the same old way, and earth and heaven still would be without thee. Thumb face. There is a face upon my thumb, I did not paint it there, with pointy ears and winky eyes and greenish bristly hair. I keep it hidden from my friends so that they will not stare. It has a little twisty mouth and yellow teethies too. It snickers when I hold my fork and giggles when I'm blue, and laughs and laughs and laughs at everything I try to do. Homework Machine The homework machine, oh the homework machine, most perfect contraption that's ever been seen. Just put in your homework, then drop in a dime. Snap on the switch, and in 10 seconds time, your homework comes out quick and clean as can be. Here it is, 9 plus 4, and the answer is 3. 3? Oh me. I guess it's not as perfect as I thought it would be. Eight balloons. Eight balloons no one was buying, all broke loose one afternoon. Eight balloons with strings of flying, free to do what they wanted to. One flew up to touch the sun. One thought highway might be fun. One took a nap in a cactus pile. One stayed to play with a careless child. One tried to taste some bacon frying. One fell in love with a porcupine. One looked close in a crocodile's mouth. One sat round till his air ran out. Eight balloons no one was buying. They broke loose and flew away they flew. Free to float and free to fly. And free to pop where they wanted to. Hey Sonny, Shel Silverstein inspired me to write my own poem about us. Great, let's hear it. In a little hole, snug as snug can be. Lives Sonny the Mouse, quite a sight to see. 
with 217 siblings, oh what a bunch, but Sonny stood out, he had quite a hunch. While others squeaked, cheese is our delight, Sonny dreamed big of a cheese-filled flight. He'd scamper and scurry through cracks and holes in search of his dream with ambitious goals. Now Adam the teacher, with chalk in hand, caught sight of Sonny, oh so grand. Hey there, little fella, what's your plan? Are you off to cheese land? Do you need a hand? Sonny blinked twice, then give a nod. I'll fly to the moon with cheese as my pod. The teacher chuckled a laugh so bright. Sonny, my friend, dreams take flight. So with a backpack stuffed full of cheese, Sonny set off as easy as you please. Through fields and forests he boldly strode, with Adam's cheers echoing down the road. Now whether Sonny's dream came true is a mystery that's yet to ensue. But if you listen closely on a starry night, you might hear a mouse soaring in flight. Asians, if we met and I say hi, that's a salutation. If you ask me how I feel, that's consideration. If we stop and talk a while, that's a conversation. If we understand each other, that's communication. If we argue, scream, and fight, that's an altercation. If later we apologize, that's reconciliation. If we help each other home, that's cooperation. And all these Asians add up, make civilization. If I say this is a wonderful poem, is that an exaggeration? Musical career. She wanted to play the piano, but her hands couldn't reach the keys. When her hands could finally reach the keys, her feet couldn't reach the floor. When her hands could finally reach the keys, and her feet could reach the floor, she didn't want to play that old piano anymore. Anteater. A genuine anteater, the pet man told my dad. Turned out it was an aunt eater, and now my uncle's mad. Buck and Bronco. Can you ride the Buck and Bronco? Can you stay in that old saddle till your teeth begin to rattle? Can you whoop and bounce and stick upon his back? Can you ride the Buck and Bronco while he's snorting smoke and kicking? And your stomach starts to sicken? And you feel as though your spine's about to crack? I can ride the Buck and Bronco. I'll just sit up here and whistle till his strength begins to fizzle. And he knows that I'm his master finally. Yes, I'll tame the Buck and Bronco. You can see me set, set and easy. Here's the Bunko Bronco. Here is me. Snap. She was opening up her umbrella. She thought it was going to rain. When we all heard a snap, like the clap of a trap, and we have never seen her again. Overdues. What do I do? What do I do? This library book is 42 years overdue. I admit that it's mine, but I can't pay the fine. Should I turn it in or hide it again? What do I do? What do I do? Wild strawberries. Are wild strawberries really wild? Will they scratch an adult? Will they snap at a child? Should you pet them or let them run free where they roam? Could they ever relax in a steam-heated home? Can they be trained to not growl at guests? Will a litter box work or would they leave a mess? Can we make them a cowberry herding the cows, or maybe a muleberry pulling the plows, or maybe a huntberry chasing the grouse, or maybe a watchberry guarding the house? And though they may curl up at your feet oh so sweetly, can you ever feel that you trust them completely? Or should we make a pet out of something less scary, like the domestic prune or the imported cherry? Anyhow, you've been warned, and I will not be blamed if your wild strawberry cannot be tamed. How to make a swing with no rope or board or nails. First grow a mustache a hundred inches long, then loop it over a hickory limb. Make sure the limb is strong. Now pull yourself up off the ground and wait until the spring. Then swing. Gum eyeball. There's an eyeball in the gumball machine right there between the red and the green, looking at me as if to say, you don't need any more gum today. Hot dog. I have a hot dog for a pet, the only kind my folks would let me get. He doesn't smell sort of bad, and yet he absolutely never gets the sofa wet. We have a butcher for a vet, and the stranger vet you ever met. Guess we're the weirdest family yet to have a hot dog for a pet.
Adventures of a Frisbee. The Frisbee, he got tired of sailing to and fro and to, and thought about the other things that he might like to do. So the next time that they threw him, he turned there in the sky and sailed away and tried to find some new things he could try. He tried to be an eyeglass, but no one could see through him. He tried to be a UFO, but everybody knew him. He tried to be a dinner plate, but he got cracked and quit. He tried to be a pizza, but got tossed and baked and bit. He tried to be a hubcap, but the cars all moved too quick. He tried to be a record, but the spinning made him sick. He tried to be a quarter, but he was too big to spend. So he rolled home, quite glad to be a frisbee once again. Come skating. They said come skating. They said it's so nice. They said come skating. I'd done it twice. They said come skating. It sounded nice. I wore roller. They meant ice. The Mihu with an exactly what? Knock knock. Who's there? Me. Mihu. That's right. What's right? Mihu. That's what I want to know. What's what you want to know? Mihu. Yes, exactly. Exactly what? Yes, I have an exactly what on a chain. Exactly what on a chain? Yes. Yes what? No, exactly what? That's what I want to know. I told you exactly what. Exactly what? Yes. Yes what? Yes, it's with me. What's with you? Exactly what? That's what's with me. Me who? Yes. Go away. Knock knock. I'll tell you the story of Clooney the Clown, who worked in a circus that came through town. His shoes were too big and his hat was too small, but he just wasn't, just wasn't funny at all. He had a trombone to play loud silly tunes, he had a green dog and a thousand balloons. He was floppy and sloppy and skinny and tall, but he wasn't, just wasn't funny at all. And every time he did a trick, everyone felt a little sick, and every time he told a joke, Folks sighed as if their hearts were broke, and every time he lost a shoe, everyone looked awfully blue, and every time he stood on his head, everyone screamed, go back to bed, and every time he made a leap, everybody fell asleep, and every time he ate his tie, everyone began to cry, and Clooney could not make any money simply because he was not funny. One day he said, I'll tell this town how it feels to be an unfunny clown. And he told them all why he looked so sad, and he told them all why he felt so bad. He told of pain and rain and cold. He told of darkness in his soul. And after he finished his tale of woe, did everyone cry? Oh no, no, no. They laughed until they shook the trees with ha ha ha's and he he he's. They laughed with howls and yowls and shrieks. They laughed all day, they laughed all week. They laughed until they had a fit. They laughed until their jackets split. The laughter spread for miles around, to every city, every town, over mountains, across the sea, from Saint-Tropez to Mont Saint-Denis. And soon the whole world rang with laughter, lasting till forever after. While Clooney stood in the circus tent, with his head drooped low and his shoulders bent. And he said, that's not what I meant. I'm funny just by accident. And while the world laughed outside, Clooney the Clown sat down and cried. Trying on clothes. I tried on the farmer's hat, didn't fit. A little too small, just a bit. Too floppy, couldn't get used to it, took it off. I tried on the dancer's shoes. A little too loose, not the kind you could use. For walking, didn't feel right on them, kicked them off. I tried on the summer sun, felt good, nice and warm, knew it would, tried the grass beneath bare feet, felt neat, finally, finally, felt well dressed, nature's clothes just fit me best. Shapes A square was sitting quietly outside his rectangular shack, when a triangle came down, kerplunk, and struck him in the back. I must go to the hospital, cried the wounded square, so a passing rolling circle picked him up and took him there. Tired. I've been working so hard you just wouldn't believe, and I'm tired. There's so little time and so much to achieve, and I'm tired. I've been lying here holding the grass in its place, pressing a leaf with the side of my face. 
tasting the apples to see if they're sweet, counting the toes on a centipede's feet. I've been memorizing the shape of that cloud, warning the robins not to chirp so loud, shooing the butterflies off the tomatoes, keeping an eye out for floods and tornadoes. I've been supervising the work of the ants and thinking of pruning the cantaloupe plants, timing the sun to see what time it sets, calling the fish to swim into my nets. I've taken 12,041 breaths, and I'm tired. Prehistoric These lizards, toads, and turtles, dear, with which you love to play, were dinosaurs and plesiosaurs in prehistoric days. They fought the armored ankylosaurs and wild brontosaurus, glyptodons and varanids, and hungry plesiosaurus, shark-like ichthyosaurs and flying pterodons. Tyrannosaurus, Chronosaurus, and Treacherous Trachodon, Shrieking Archaeopteryx, Triceratops as well. Those I cannot pronounce, nor even try to spell. But anyway, they slowly turn to lizards and turtles and snakes. And all the brave and wild and woolly prehistoric people, they turned into us for goodness sake. My Guitar Oh, wouldn't it be the most wondrous thing to have a guitar that could play and could sing? By itself, what an absolute joy it would be to have a guitar that didn't need me. Spelling Bee I got stung by a bee, I won't tell you where. I got stung by a bee, I was just lying there. And it tattooed a message I can't let you see that spells out, Hello, you've been stung by a bee. Always sprinkle pepper Always sprinkle pepper in your hair. Always sprinkle pepper in your hair. For then, if you're kidnapped by a wild barbazoop who sells you to a ragged hag who wants you for her soup, she'll pick you up and sniff you, and then she'll sneeze at you and say, My tot, you're much too hot. I fear you'll never do. And with a shout, she'll throw you out, and you'll run away from there. And soon you will be safe at home with sitting in your chair. If you always, always, always Always, 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 always spring pepper in your hair. Peckin. The saddest thing I ever did see was a woodpecker peckin' at a plastic tree. He looks at me and, friend, he says, things ain't as sweet as they used to be. It's hot. It's hot. I can't get cool. I've drunk a quart of lemonade. I think I'll take my shoes off and sit around in the shade. It's hot. My back is sticky. The sweat rolls down my chin. I think I'll take my clothes off and sit around in my skin. It's hot. I've tried with electric fans and pools and ice cream cones. I think I'll take my skin off and sit around in my bones. It's still hot. Turtle. Our turtle did not eat today. Just lies on his back in the strangest way and doesn't move, I tickled him and poked at him and dangled string in front of him. But he just lies there stiff and cold and sort of staring straight ahead. Jim says, he's dead. Oh no, say I, a wooden turtle cannot die. Crowded tub. There's too many kids in this tub. There's too many elbows to scrub. I just washed it behind. I'm sure it wasn't mine. There's too many kids in this tub. Channels. Channel 1's no fun. Channel 2's just news. Channel 3 is hard to see. Channel 4 is just a bore. Channel 5 is all jive. Channel 6 needs to be fixed. Channel 7 and Channel 8, just old movies, not so great. Channel 9's a waste of time. Channel 10 is off, my child. Wouldn't you like to talk a while? Hippo's Hope There once was a hippo who wanted to fly. Fly high D, try high D, my high D ho. So he sewed him some wings that could flap through the sky. Sky high D, fly high D, why high D go? He climbed to the top of a mountain of snow. Snow high D, slow high D, oh high D ho. With the clouds high above and the sea down below. Where high D, there high D, scare high D, ho. Happy ending. And he flipped, and he flapped, and he bounced so loud. Now Heidi, loud Heidi, proud Heidi poop. And he sailed like an eagle, off into the clouds. Heidi he, 
fly to he, I hide de boo, unhappy ending. And he leaped like a frog, and he fell like a stone. Stone Heidi, lone Heidi, own Heidi flop. And he crashed and he drowned and broke all of his bones. Bones Heidi, moans Heidi, groans Heidi glob. Chicken ending. He looked up at the sky and looked down at the sea. See Heidi, free Heidi, we Heidi way. And he turned and went home and had cookies and tea. That's Heidi, all Heidi. I have to say. What if? Last night while I lay thinking here, some what ifs crawled inside my ear and pranced and partied all night long and sang their same old what if song. What if I'm dumb in school? What if they've closed the swimming pool? What if I get beat up? What if there's poison in my cup? What if I start to cry? What if I get sick and die? What if I flunk that test? What if green hair grows on my chest? What if nobody likes me? What if a bolt of lightning strikes me? What if I don't grow taller? What if my head starts getting smaller? What if the fish won't bite? What if the wind tears up my kite? What if they start a war? What if my parents get divorced? What if the bus is late? What if my pe teeth don't grow in straight? What if I tear my pants? What if I never learn to dance? Everything seems swell, and then, Nighttime what if strike again. Sour Face Anne. Sour Face Anne, with your chin in your hand, haven't you ever been pleased? You used to complain that you had no fur coat, and now you complain of the fleas. The Climbers. A mountain climbing exploration took us to these distant peaks where no one's ever been before. Was it my imagination? Did I feel this mountain move? Did I hear it snore? Rock of Eye. Rock a bye baby in the treetop. Don't you know a treetop is no safe place to rock? And who put you up there? In your cradle too? Baby, I think someone down here's got it in for you. The little boy and the old man. Said the little boy, sometimes I drop my spoon. Said the little old man, I do that too. The little boy whispered, I wet my pants. I do that too, laughed the little old man. Said the little boy, I often cry. The old man nodded, so do I. But worst of all, said the boy, it seems grown-ups don't pay attention to me. And he felt the warmth of a wrinkled old hand. I know what you mean, said the little old man. Surprise! My grandpa went to Myrtle Beach and sent us back a turtle each. And then he went to Kathmandu and mailed us a real live cockatoo. From Rio, an iguana came. A smelly goat arrived from Spain, and now he's in India, you see. My grandpa always thinks of me. Ticklish Tom Did you hear about Ticklish Tom? He got tickled by his mom, wiggled and giggled and fell on the floor, laughed and rolled right out the door, all the way to school, and then he got tickled by his friends, laughed till he fell off his stool, laughed and rolled right out of the school, down the stairs and finally stopped till he got tickled by a cop. And all the more that he kept giggling, all the more the folks kept tickling. He shrieked and screamed and rolled around, laughed his way right out of town. Through the country, down the road, he got tickled by a toad. Past the mountains, across the plain, tickled by the falling rain, tickled by the soft brown grass, tickled by the clouds that passed. Giggling, rolling on his back, he rolled on the railroad track. Rumble, rumble, whistle, roll. Tim ain't ticklish anymore. The Nail Biter Some people manicure their nails. Some people trim them neatly. Some people keep them filed down. I bite them off completely. Yes, it's a nasty habit, but before you start to scold, remember, I have never, ever scratched a single soul. The fly is in. The fly is in. The milk is in. The bottle is in. The fridge is in. The kitchen is in. The house is in. The town. The flea is on, the dog is on, the quilt is on, the bed is on, the carpet is on, the floor is on the ground. The worm is under, the ground is under, the grass is under, the blanket is under, the diaper is under, the baby is under the tree. The bee is bothering, the puppy is bothering, the dog is bothering, the cat is bothering, the baby is bothering, mama is bothering me. Strange wind. What a strange wind it was today. 
whistling and whirling and skirling away, like a worried old woman with so much to say. What a strange wind it was today. What a strange wind it was today, cool and clear from a sky so gray. And my hat stayed on, but my head blew away. What a strange wind it was today. One, two. One, two, buckle my shoe. Buckle your own shoe? Who said that? I did. What are you doing with these silly buckles on your shoes anyway? Three, four, shut the door. You shut it, you opened it. Er, five, six, pick up sticks? Why should I pick them up? Do you think I'm your slave? Buckle my shoe, shut the door, pick up sticks? Next thing you'll be telling me is to lay them straight. But it's only a poem. Nine, ten, a big fat, oh, never mind. Tusk, tusk, the walrus got braces, and that's why his face is a tangle of wires and steel. He'll sit and he'll wait till his tusks are both straight, and then think how happy he'll feel. But meanwhile, they're ruining his meal. Captain Blackbeard did what? The sea is a-roarin', the seagulls they screech, the bosun he rants and he raves. And the whole scurvy crew says, it's true, yes it's true, oh Captain Blackbeard's shaved. We had buried some treasure and bodies as well, and was just sailing back from the cave, when he calls for boiled water and stomps down below, and gore, he becomes up shaved. There is a chickenish stubble, a fish belly skin, on that face once so blazon and brave. His old faithful parrot can hardly bear it, since old Captain Blackbeard is shaved. When he shouts, board and sinker, it sounds like a clinker. He gets lots of laughs from the slaves, and his loud body songs seem a little bit wrong since old Captain Blackbeard shaved. Now no one is fearing his look or his lash or his threats of a watery grave, and things ain't the same in the pirate game since old Captain Blackbeard shaved. Magic Carpet You have a magic carpet that will whiz you through the air, to Spain or Maine or Africa, if you just tell it where. So will you let it take you where you've never been before? Or will you buy some drapes to match and use it on your floor? Outside or underneath? Bob bought a hundred dollar suit but couldn't afford any underwear. Says he, if you, your outside looks real good, no one will know what's under there. Jack bought some hundred dollar shorts but wore a suit with rips and tears. Says he, it won't matter what people see as long as I know what's under there. Tom bought a flute and a box of crayons, some bread and cheese and a golden pear. And as for his suit or his underwear, he doesn't think about them much or care. It's all the same to the clam. You may leave the clam on the ocean's floor. It's all the same to the clam. For a hundred thousand years or more, it's all the same to the clam. You may bury him deep in mud and muck, or carry him round to bring you luck, or use him for a hockey puck, it's all the same to the clam. You may call him Jim or Frank or Nell, it's all the same to the clam. Or make an ashtray from his shell, it's all the same to the clam. You may take him riding on the train, or leave him sitting in the rain, you'll never hear the clam complain, it's all the same to the clam. Yes, the world may stop or the world may spin. It's all the same to the clam. And the sky may come a fallen in. And it's all the same to the clam. And man may sing his endless songs of wronging rights and righting wrongs. The clam just sets and gets along. It's all the same to the clam. Hula eel. Take an eel. Now it's my turn. I've got a poem too. I can't wait. In a mouse hole snug and tight lived Sonny a mouse with all his might. But oh, what a plight, what a hullabaloo. With 217 siblings, there's never a shoe. They scurry and squeak, they romp and play, turning their home into chaos each day. Poor Sonny just wants a moment of peace, with, but his siblings' antics never cease. He tries to nap, but there's no hush. His brothers and sisters make quite a rush. They swing from the chandeliers with glee, while Sonny dreams of tranquility. He dreams of a place with no hustle or bustle, where he can relax without all the tussle. But alas, in a mouse family so grand, 
Peace and quiet are in short demand. So Sonny resigns to his fate with a sigh, embracing the chaos with a twinkling eye. For in the end, amidst all the fuss, there's nothing quite like a big mousy fuss. Make a loop. Use him as a hula hoop. Feel him twist and twirl and spin, down your ankles, round your chin. Tighter, tighter, tighter yet. Ain't an eel a lovely pet? Hey, answer when I talk to you. Don't just stand there turning blue. Board. I can't afford a skateboard. I can't afford an outboard. I can't afford a surfboard. All I can afford is a board. Standing is stupid. Standing is stupid. Crawling is a curse. Skipping is silly. Walking is worse. Hopping is hopeless. Jumping is a chore. Sitting is senseless. Leaning is a bore. Running's ridiculous. Jogging's insane. Guess I'll go upstairs and lie down again. Who ordered the broiled face? Well, here you are, just as you ordered. Broiled face with butter sauce, mashed potatoes on the side. What do you mean you wanted me fried? The man in the iron pale mask. He's the man in the iron pale mask. He can do the most difficult task. He can duel, he can joust, he can charge, he can chase. He can climb, he can rhyme, he can wrestle and race. They'll show you his courage, but never his face, no matter how often you ask. He's the brave and the fearless, the usually tearless man in the iron pale mask. Gulu. The Gulu bird. She has no feet. She cannot walk upon the street. She cannot build herself a nest. She cannot land and take a rest. Through rain and snow and thunderous skies, she weeps forever as she flies and lays her eggs high over town and prays that they fall safely down. Headache. Having a tree growing up out of me is often a worrisome thing. I'm twisty and thorny and branchy and bare, but wait till you see me in spring. Quick trip. We've been caught by the quick digesting gink, and now we're dodging his teeth. And now we are resting in his intestine, and now we're back out on the street. Little Abigail and the Beautiful Pony There was a girl named Abigail who was taking a drive through the country with her parents when she spied a beautiful sad-eyed gray and white pony. And next to it was a sign that said, For sale, cheap. Oh, said Abigail, may I have that pony? May I please? And her parents said, No, you may not. And Abigail said, But I must have that pony. And her parents said, well, you can't have that pony, but you can have a nice butter pecan ice cream cone when you get home. And Abigail said, I don't want a butter pecan ice cream cone. I want that pony. I must have that pony. And her parents said, be quiet and stop nagging. You're not getting that pony. And Abigail began to cry and said, if I don't get that pony, I'll die. And her parents said, you won't die. No child ever died from not getting a pony. And Abigail felt so bad that when they got home, she went to bed. And she couldn't eat, and she couldn't sleep, and her heart was broken, and she did die, all because of the pony that her parents wouldn't buy. This is a good story to read to your folks when, you, when they won't buy you something you want. Hiccup Cure. Hiccup. 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 Want to cure your hiccups quick? Stick out your tongue and bite your lip. Hold your breath and shake one hip. Pull back your left foot and kick up. Now, you see, we've cured your hiccup. Nothing much to it. Don't you feel swell? <laughs> oh well. The Painter I'm the man who paints the stripes upon the zebras, and I also paint the warts upon the toad. And with this brush and pot, I give leopards lovely spots, and add some color to the chipmunk's coat. I paint the flaming red on robin redbreast. I pour the blue on bluegills by the shore. And when the fireflies dim, I splash silver paint on him, and he shines more brightly than he did before. Jack Frost? He's just a part-time working fella, touching up the leaves and trees and things. He's famouser than me, but I'm happier than he, because I paint the ones that runs and flies and sings. Nobody. Nobody loves me, nobody cares. Nobody picks me peaches and pears. Nobody offers me candy and cokes. Nobody listens and laughs at my jokes. Nobody helps when I get in a fight. 
Nobody does all my homework at night. Nobody misses me. Nobody cries. Nobody thinks I'm a wonderful guy. So if you ask me who's my best friend in a whiz, I'll stand up and tell you that nobody is. But yesterday night, I got quite a scare. I woke up and nobody just wasn't there. I called out and reached out for nobody's hand in the darkness where nobody usually stands. Then I poked through the house in each cranny and nook, but I found somebody each place that I looked. I searched till I'm tired, and now with the dawn, there's no doubt about it, nobody's gone. Zebra question. I asked the zebra, are you black with white stripes or white with black stripes? And the zebra asked me, are you good with bad habits or are you bad with good habits? Are you noisy with quiet times or are you quiet with noisy times? Are you happy with some sad days or are you sad with some happy days? Are you neat with some sloppy ways or are you sloppy with some neat ways? And on and on and on and on and on and on he went. I'll never ask a zebra about stripes again. The Sword Swallower The great sword swallower is Salomar. He wants no ties or collars. He leans back, opens his mouth, and gulp his sword he swallows. I guess he finds it fun to feel that steel down in his belly. It's fine for he, but as for me, I'd take some bread and jelly. Arrows I shot an arrow toward the sky. It hit a white cloud floating by. The cloud fell dying to the shore. I don't shoot arrows anymore. The Toad and the Kangaroo Said the Toad to the Kangaroo, I can hop and so can you. So if we marry, we'll have a child who can jump a mountain or hop a mile. And we can call it a Toadaroo, said the hopeful Toad to the Kangaroo. Said the Kangaroo, My dear, what a perfectly lovely idea. I would most gladly marry you. But as for having a Toadaroo, I'd rather we call it a kangaroo, said the kangaroo to the frowning toad. So they argued but couldn't agree on rangatu or kangaree. And finally the toad said, I don't give a dang if it's a root of code or a toad of kang. I really don't feel like marrying you. Fine with me, said the kangaroo. And the toad had no more to say, and the kangaroo just hopped away. And they never married or had a child. I could have jumped a mountain or hop a mile. What a loss, what a shame, just cause they couldn't agree on a name. Play ball. Okay, let's play. I think that we have everyone we need. I'll be the strong arm pitcher who can throw with blinding speed. And Pete will be the catcher who squats low and pounds his mitt. And Mike will be the home run king who snarls and waits to hit. One loud and long and hard and high. Way out beyond the wall. So let's get started. What? You? Oh yes, you can be the ball. Friendship. I've discovered a way to stay friends forever. There's really nothing to it. I simply tell you what to do and you do it. Examination. I went to the doctor. He reached down my throat. He pulled out a shoe and a little toy boat. He pulled out a skate and a bicycle seat and said, be more careful about what you eat. Home cycle. If you add cycle to your pop, would it become a popsicle? Would a mop become a mopsicle? Would a cop become a copsicle? Would a chop become a chopsicle? Would a drop become a dropsicle? Would a hop become a hopsicle? I guess it's time to stopsicle. Or is it timesicle to stopsicle? Hey sickle, I can't stopsicle. Oh sickle, my sickle, will sickle, icicle. Have sickle, to sickle, toxicle. Like sickle, thick, this sickle, forever sickle. Huh, sickle? Senses. A mouth was talking to a nose and an eye. A passing listening ear said, Pardon me, but you spoke so loud I couldn't help it over here. But the mouth just closed and the nose turned up, and the eye just looked away, and the ear with nothing more to hear went sadly on its way. Hinges. If we had hinges on our heads, there wouldn't be no sin. Because we could take the bad stuff out and leave the good stuff in. Fear. Barnabas Browning was scared of drowning, so he never would swim or get into a boat or take a bath or cross a moat. He just sat day and night with his door locked tight and the windows nailed down, shaking with fear that a wave might appear and cried so many tears that they filled up the room and he drowned. 
Twistable Turnable Man. He's the twistable, turnable, squeezable, pullable, stretchable, foldable man. He can crawl in your pocket, or fit in your locket, or screw himself into a twenty-fold socket, or stretch himself up to the steeple or taller, or squeeze himself into a thimble or smaller. Yes he can, of course he can. He's the twistable, turnable, squeezable, pullable, stretchable, shrinkable man. And he lives a passable life with his squeezable, lovable, kissable, huggable, pullable, tuggable wife. And they have two twistable kids who bend up the way that they did, and they turn and they stretch just as much as they can for the bendable, foldable, do what you're toldable, easily moldable, buy what you're soldable, washable, mendable, highly dependable, buyable, saleable, always available, bounceable, shakeable, almost unbreakable, twistable, turnable man. Batty. The baby bat screamed out in fright. Turn on the dark, I'm afraid of the light. Union for children's rights. Strike, strike for children's rights. Longer weekends, shorter school hours. Higher allowances, less baths and showers. No Brussels sprouts, more root beer, and 17 summer vacations a year. If you're ready to strike, line up right here. Hitting. Use a log to hit a hog. Use a twig to hit a pig. Use a rake to hit a snake. Use a swatter to hit an otter, use a ski to hit a bee, and use a feather when you hit me. Catching I tried to catch a cold as he went running past on a damp and chilly afternoon in autumn. I tried to catch a cold, but he skittered by so fast that I missed him, but I'm glad to hear you caught him. Deaf Donald Deaf Donald meant talkie Sue, but was all he could do. And Sue said, Donald, I sure do like you but was all he could do. And Sue asked Donald, do you like me too? But was all he could do. Goodbye then, Donald, I'm leaving you. But was all he did do. And she left forever, so she never knew that means I love you. Have fun. It's safe to swim in Pemrose Park. I guarantee there are no sharks. Dog's Day. They could have sung me just one song to kind of sort of celebrate, or left a present on the lawn, a juicy bone, a piece of steak, instead of just a candle on this lump of dog food on my plate. But no one cares when a dog was born, and this ain't much of a birthday cake. Skin Stealer. This evening I unzipped my skin and carefully unscrewed my head, exactly as I always do when I prepare myself for bed. And while I slept, a cuckoo came, as naked as could be, and put on the skin and screwed on the head that once belonged to me. Now wearing my feet, he runs through the street in a most disgraceful way, doing things and saying things I never do or say, tickling the children and kicking the men and dancing the ladies away. So if he makes bright eyes cry or makes your poor head spin, that scoundrel you see is not really me, He's the cuckoo who's wearing my skin. Ladies first. Pamela Purse yelled ladies first, pushing in front of the ice cream line. Pamela Purse yelled ladies first, grabbing the ketchup at dinner time. Climbing on the morning bus, she shoved right by all of us. And there'd be a tiff or a fight or a fuss when Pamela Purse yelled ladies first. But Pamela Purse screamed ladies first when we went off on our jungle trip. Pamela Purse said that her thirst was worse and guzzled our water every sip. And when we got grabbed by the wild savage band who tied us together and made us all stand, in a long line in front of the king of the land, a cannibal known as Fryam Up Dan, who sat on his throne in a bib so grand, with a lick on his lips and a fork in his hand. As he tried to decide who'd be first in the pan, from back of the line in that shrill voice of hers, Pamela Purse yelled, Ladies first! Frozen dream. I'll take the dream I had last night and put it in my freezer. So someday, long and far away, when I'm an old gray geezer, I'll take it out and thaw it out, this lovely dream I've frozen, and boil it up and sit me down and dip my old cold toes in it. The lost cat. We can't find the cat. We don't know where she's at. Oh, where did she go? Does anyone know? Let's ask this walking hat. God's wheel. God says to me with kind of a smile, Hey, how would you like to be God a while and steer the world? Okay, says I, I'll give it a try. Where do I sit? 
How much do I get? What time is lunch? When can I quit? Give me back the wheel, says God. I don't think you're quite ready yet. Shadow Race Every time I've raced my shadow, when the sun was at my back, it always ran ahead of me, always got the best of me. But every time I've raced my shadow, when my face was toward the sun, I won. Clarence Clarence Lee from Tennessee loved the commercials he saw on TV. He watched with wide, believing eyes and bought everything they advertised. Cream to make his skin feel better, spray to make his hair look wetter, bleach to make his white things whiter, stylish jeans that fit much tighter, toothpaste for his cavities, powder for his doggy's fleas, purple mouthwash for his breath, deodorant to stop his sweat. He bought each cereal they presented, bought each game that they invented, and one day he looked and saw a brand new ma, a better pa, new improved in every way. Hurry, order yours today. So of course our little Clarence sent off for two brand new parents. The new ones came in the morning mail, the old ones he sold at a garage sale. And now they're all doing fine. His new folks treat him sweet and kind, his old ones work in an old coal mine. So if your ma and pa are mean, and make you eat your lima beans, and make you wash and make you wait, and never let you stay up late, and scream and scold and preach and pout, and that simply means they're wearing out. So send off for two brand new parents, and you'll be as happy as little Clarence. Rhino Pen Tell me then, of all you've seen, what could be more preposterous than forgetting your pen and writing a theme with the horn of a patient rhinoceros? If if I had wheels instead of feet, and rows instead of eyes, then I could drive to the flower show and maybe win a prize. Push button. I push the light switch button, and click the light goes on. I push the lawn mower button, and voom, it mows the lawn. I push the root beer button, and whoosh, it fills my cup. I push the glove compartment button, and clack, it opens up. I push the TV button, and zap, there's white herb. I push my belly button. Burp. Kidnapped. This morning I got kidnapped by three masked men. They stopped me on the sidewalk and offered me some candy. And when I wouldn't take it, they grabbed me by the collar and pinned my arms behind me and shoved me in the back seat of this big black lim limousine and tied my hands behind my back with sharp and rusty wire. Then they put a blindfold on me so I couldn't see where they took me and plugged up my ears with cotton so I couldn't hear their voices and drove for 20 miles or at least 20 minutes and then dragged me from the car down to some cold and moldy basement where they stuck me in a corner and went off to get the ransom leaving one of them to guard me with a shotgun pointed at me tied up sitting on a stool that's why I'm late for school Suspense Oh murdering Jack tied Louise to the track in a plan that was grisly and gory while back in the shack was her marvelous Mac, held prisoner there by the outlaw Suntory. Then the wolf pack attacked, and then down from the stack, with six guns ablaze, jumped young Billy McClory, a crash and a cry, and I'm sorry, but I have forgotten the rest of the story. Dinner Guest When the razor tooth slime comes to my house to dine, you may find me in France or Detroit, or off in Quatorium, or in the spare room of my Uncle Ed's place in Beloit. You may find me in Philly, Racine, or Rabat. You may reach me in Malmo or Gore. You may see me in Sikkim, and likely as not, you will run into me at the store. You may find me in Hamburg, or up in St. Paul, in Kyoto, Kenosha, or Nome. But one thing is sure, if you find me at all, you never shall find me at home. In Search of Cinderella From dusk till dawn, from town to town, without a single clue, I seek the tender, slender foot to fit this crystal shoe. From dusk till dawn, I try it on, each damsel that I meet. And I still love her so, but oh, I've started hating feet. Almost perfect. Almost perfect, but not quite. Those were the words of Mary Hume at her seventh birthday party, looking round the ribboned room. This tablecloth is pink, not white. Almost perfect, 
but not quite. Almost perfect, but not quite. Those were the words of grown-up Mary, talking about her handsome beau, the one she wasn't going to marry. Squeezes me a bit too tight. Almost perfect, but not quite. Almost perfect, but not quite. Those were the words of old Miss Hume, teaching in the seventh grade, grading papers in the gloom, late at night up in her room. They never crossed their T's just right. Almost perfect, but not quite. 98 the day she died, complaining about the spotless floor. People shook their heads inside. Guess that she'll like heaven more. Up went her soul on feathered wings. Out the door, up, out at night. Another voice from heaven came. Almost perfect, but not quite. Pie problem. If I eat one more piece of pie, I'll die. If I can't have one more piece of pie, I'll die. So since it's all decided I must die, I might as well have one more piece of pie. Mm, uh, oh my, chomp go by. The Oak and the Rose An oak tree and a rose bush grew, young and green together, talking the talk of growing things, wind and water and weather. And while the rose bush sweetly bloomed, the oak tree grew so high that now it spoke of newer things, eagles, mountains, peaks, and skies. I guess you think you're pretty great, the rose was heard to cry, screaming as loud as possibly could to the treetop in the sky. And you have no time for flower talk now that you've grown so tall. It's not so much that I've grown, said the tree, it's just that you've stayed so small. They've put a brassiere on the camel. They've put a brassiere on the camel. She wasn't dressed proper, you know. They put a brassiere on the camel so that her humps won't show. And they're making other respectable plans, they're even insisting the pigs should wear pants. They'll dress up the ducks if we give them a chance, since they've put a brassiere on the camel. They've put a brassiere on the camel. They claim she's more decent this way. They put a brassiere on the camel. The camel had nothing to say. They squeezed her into it. I'll never know how. They say that she looks more respectable now. Lord knows what they've got in mind for the cow, since they put a brassiere on the camel. This bridge, this bridge will only take you halfway there, to those mysterious lands you long to see, through gypsy camps and swirling Arab fairs, the moonlit woods where unicorns run free. So come and walk wa a while with me, and share the twisting trails and wondrous worlds I've known. But this bridge will only take you halfway there, the last few steps you'll have to take alone. Rhoda's Dress Oh, that draggedy, baggedy, shaggedy, saggedy, raggedy dress of Rhoda's. She was ashamed to go to school, lest somebody would notice, and so she got the goony bird, and set him in her hair, and now nobody notices that worn-out dress she wears. Creative. Everyone says, be creative, invent something new, and they'll buy it. But I've invented this mustard ice cream, and nobody here wants to try it. The Snack I found a clam beside the sea, inside a seedy sack. Says I to the clam, Dear sir or ma'am, allow me to call you Jack. Will you come home with me for company and maybe a midnight snack? For I have some nicey spicy sauce to pour upon your back. I put the clam in a pewter pot and boiled the burbling brew. And he soaked and he steamed and his green eyes gleamed. And he grew and he grew and he grew. He was oh so small. Now he's 12 feet tall, and I'm feeling rather blue, cause he's pouring Tabasco on my back. I wonder what he'll do. Garbage Soup Recipe How do we make a garbage soup? A little glop, a little goop, a cup of slop, a quart of bunk, then half a tablespoon of gunk, a pinch of grit, a dash of grime, a half a scuzz, a squeeze of slime. Aha! It shall be ready soon. Did you bring your bowl? Did you bring your spoon? The books I have not read. Here are the books I have not read that I promise to read some day. And who knows, maybe after baseball games, circuses, and taking naps, playing drums and building planes, drinking cokes and telling jokes, and playing spin the bottle, and watching stars and driving cars, and getting married and working a job, and having kids and getting old, and getting fat and getting gray. I may. Presents, presents, presents. 
the birthday party's over, and I've got a sleepy head. But I got so many presents that I can't get near my bed. They're stacked from porch to parlor. They're jamming up the stair. They're piled in front of all the doors. I can't get anywhere. I can't get to the kitchen, and I'm starving for some food. I can't get to the closet, so I'm shivering in the nude. I can't go out, get out to go to school, and I can't go to the show. And I can't get to the bathroom where I really have to go. And it's painfully surprising to find life's not too pleasant when you become a prisoner of too many presents. Binky Blum Binky Blum, my little chum, why do you suck your thumb? It's unhygienic, crude, and dumb, and leaves your hand all wet and numb. Your daddy worries and your mum says, wonder where he gets that from. So Binky Blum, unsuck that thumb, for heaven knows you've stuck that thumb where microbes swim or might have swum. Where germs all climb, or once have clumb. There's sawdust from that drum you drum, lint from that guitar you strum, and all that sand and scuzz and scum, and mud and crud and stuck to your thumb. Oh, B Binky Blum, why don't you come into the kitchen and have some sweet angel cake that's soaked in rum? A juicy plum, some bubble gum, a cookie? No? At least a crumb? Oh, Binky Blum, my little chum, don't just sit there looking glum staring at your other thumb, going yum. Exercise in Hen The fat old hen was lazing round, munching grain and corn, when she realized that all the fattest hens were gone. Now she's on a diet, exercising hard, trying to be the thinnest hen in the chicken yard. Birthday the party clown was away at the lake, the toy store man was not awake, the bakery man was out of cake. I hope you like this birthday snake. Collecting Jane collects old postage stamps, Jake collects old electric trains, I collect old hamburgers. They both think I'm kinda strange, but when it's time for late night snacks, I pity poor old Jake and Jane, nibbling on those postage stamps trying to chew those electric trains. The Hungry TV Set There was a hungry TV set who never got to try One taste of all those luscious looking things it couldn't buy All day, all night, its screen was filled with puddings, cakes, and pies And the TV cried and longed to try the things it advertised So one cold and dark and hungry night, while all the household slept The TV just unplugged itself and down the stairs it crept into the kitchen, to the fridge, and there, before its eyes, were all the scrumptious, tasty, tempting things it advertised. It gobbled up the cookies, it slurped up all the soups, it munched the muffins and the tarts, it crunched the fruity loops, it swallowed all the puddings, it gulped the chocolate mousse, it chomped the frozen pizzas, it guzzled down the juice. It finished with some ice cream and some after-dinner mints, then slowly waddled back upstairs and plugged itself back in. And there it sits and moans and burps and gasps and groans and sighs and thinks with indigestion that it might not be too wise to ever go and eat the things that you advertise. Veggie Play Why can't I play the carrot in the veggie play this year? I always play the carrot. I've got the costume here. I am the perfect carrot, tall and thin as a rope. So why do they say I have to play the dumb old cantaloupe? You know, with 217 brothers and sisters, we might sure can relate to the chaos and mischief in these poems. I can only imagine. It must be quite the adventure living in a big family like yours. Oh, you have no idea. Just like in the poem, no difference where everything is all mixed up. Sometimes I can't even tell which brother or sister I'm talking to. Sounds like a mouse-sized version of Who's On First. Do you have a favorite poem from the book? Definitely. Smart. It's about using your brains to outsmart the world. Reminds me of the time I outsmarted that cat next door. Clever little mouse. You should write your own version of A Light in the Attic, but with mouse-sized adventures. That's a brilliant idea. I'll call it A Cheese in the Pantry. I'll start working on it right away. Can't wait to read it, Sonny. Just promise me one thing. No cheesy puns. Oh, I can't make any promises about that, mister. After all... What's life without a little extra cheddar? If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I'm Adam. And I'm Sunny. And this is Where There's a Williams There's a Way.
Did you know attics are the highest part of a house directly below the roof? Attics are vital for controlling temperatures in a home. The word attic comes from the Attica region of Greece and attic style architecture.